What an awesome game and an awesome environment. I mean, you know, players made huge plays, but we talked about this a lot before that we knew this was obviously a huge rivalry, two great teams, but what a great game for our state. And to have this many people here was absolutely phenomenal. So really proud of the way that we finished the game. We're going to take a lot of learning lessons, but um, I thought they were incredible, and I thought we had some incredible things too. It's tough for you guys to get over the top. Trail in the second and third quarter, you finally did. Your team just kept trying and the perseverance to get there. Yeah, I, I I think some of it was that we just didn't finish some of the things that we needed to finish, and we would kind of carry that maybe over to the next play. Because the first quarter we started and we got some really good looks, we just needed to finish them. Uh, those are some areas we've got to grow. And then honestly, they, I know in a statistic standpoint, you wouldn't use the word crush, but I feel like they absolutely crushed us on the boards. And so we needed to do a much better job because any time that we would get that stop to be able to get us you know, into our offense or into our fast break, they'd get two points. And so from that standpoint, we needed to do a much better job. What do you feel like changed uh, on the perimeter there in the fourth? We all weren't making many three-pointers, but also weren't shooting many three-pointers in the first three. And then Well, I think our movement was better. They went zone, too, um, and our movement got better throughout that. Um, and I think when we do a great job, we still want to be able to think paint. I thought Maddie did a great job of, of getting into the paint. Um, and at the same time, it doesn't mean you always shoot it in the paint, but you still want to get it in the paint. And so that's what makes us really good is when we can go paint first and then out. Uh, now, I think we passed up some look, some shots. I don't know if you felt that same way, that not you, but <laughs> other people maybe passed up some looks from the outside that normally we don't do, I think, in the first half. And so I think we did that. Why, I don't know. We'll figure that out. Um, and at the same time, I thought in the second half, I thought just our flow was much better, and it helps when you get stops. Can you describe what it's like to be on the floor, not only with the environment of tonight, but the style of tonight? I mean, almost... No, yeah, I mean, it was just super fun, like, uh, just being out there in between plays and even, like, getting ready, getting set on defense, just, I was in awe of the amount of people that came and how loud they were, and um, also with my team and how we were able to stay composed during that time. I mean, I don't even know if we've ever played in a Lloyd Noble Center that loud, so um, that was definitely new for us, but... We came out with a dub, and we played pretty well. Maddie, um, you guys trailed by 12 at one point, and you cut it to one. Then you trailed by 10, you cut it to four, I think. And then in the fourth quarter, after middling along for a while, you had an eight-point deficit and a seven-point deficit about three minutes later. You had to come back over and over again. As you were out there, was there the sense of, you know, I thought we had this a quarter ago, or did it become frustrating? Did it occur to you that usually – one comeback's enough. How was? How did that feel? Um, honestly, I don't think we were really paying attention to it. Um, myself personally, I don't remember really looking up at the scoreboard. I was um, too busy like having fun on the floor with my teammates and making sure that everybody was on the same page and um, just playing well. So, um, I mean, I guess it might feel that way from you guys, but from us, I don't think um, we felt that. And Jenny. I, it's possible that Anna has played in, a, in an atmosphere like today. I don't know that anybody else on the roster has. And I think it's your first game with the program where it's like this, fans on their feet almost the entire fourth quarter. Personally, what was that like? And for the program, for your team to, you know, to, for this game anyway, to pack them in, to deliver the fourth quarter, to just sort of have it all. Well, we have played in front of environments like this, just not at home. And so when you have this many people that are cheering for you, look what happened at the end of the game. And you cannot convince me that that did not help us with the outcome of this game. And from that standpoint, I feel exactly like Maddie did. I mean, I think when I first got here, I felt like I knew everybody by name and I had only been here for a month and I'm telling them to stand up. 
now I'm yelling at people I don't know that have never been here that are standing up. And so, you know, it's fun. I think everybody that left here had a, had a wonderful time and they want to come back. And we need to continue to make sure that this place, this isn't, this isn't where we have to try to get to. This needs to be our baseline. And it will be someday. It will be at some point. We have an incredible fan base here at Oklahoma. That's a huge reason why I came. That's a huge reason why Maddie came. Um, and, and people are special and people are going to want to follow this team. We're a little critical sometimes as fans, but at the same time, man, we believe Crimson. Were you feeling any of what I was describing to Maddie that uh, every time you seem to be on the cusp of taking the lead and maybe even running away, they seem to hit, you know, two, three pointers in the next 30 seconds? I think between that, between the, their offensive rebounds, I think they had two big steals. They bank in a three. Yeah, you feel that, you know. Uh, but you also, if you hang your head on that, then you got no shot. So you have to keep going. And I think that's what makes this team actually really challenging to play against because you can't put us away. And I think from that standpoint, because there's, there's players that are, they stay steady. They believe. They take the scoreboard out of it. They just focus on playing. And then if we're in a game, I'll bet on us every single time. It's almost like a script. Bedlam, Taylor's almost to the record, but yet today she just went out and played basketball, didn't force any threes. In fact, one of the four threes she shot was at the end of the first quarter. Just and get one it three was an and one yeah, at the rim. Yeah, so. How about that? No one <laughs> saw that coming. <laughs> <laughs> that was that. her first points. Um, <laughs> That's right. Just her, and this is for both you and Maddie, just her ability, just, just not, just tunnel vision on winning, not think about the personal stuff. And Maddie, you've played with her long enough. You've seen that as well. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what, do you, how, what do you like playing with Taylor? Like, what, like <laughs> what is it like playing with someone like her? Um, it's great. Uh, T Rob is one <laughs> that's always going to keep moving. She's always going to keep shooting the ball. And um, I mean, she cares more about winning than anything else. So um, it's great to be able to play with somebody like that because, um, in some way, she keeps you steady. So, yeah. Were you guys aware? Where she had, where she, what she needed. Do you guys think about that on the bench at all, or in, in just mentally? Are you aware? We told her to get it at TCU. <laughs> yeah. So she doesn't really listen to us. She doesn't listen to us. Um, I mean, I guess then in that case, we should just stop trying to think about it and just tell her to keep shooting. But um, yeah, I think I told her to get it this game too. So in yeah. like all of our shooting drills, we're telling her to shoot five in a row so that she go ahead and get it. But didn't work this time. Yeah. How about this? Were you? She hit her first one, I think it was six feet back of the line, something like that. And it was her first one. And, you know, I'm watching thinking maybe she's not going to get one tonight. Um, when she hit that one, it was such a big shot in the game. Did you know she was sitting on none at that point? Were you waiting for her to finally hit one? Or, no, not really. Oh, shoot, I don't even know. I mean, um, anytime a three goes up by T-Rob, I'm expecting it to go in. I think everybody is, but... Um, yeah. We don't have a tally. We don't. <laughs> you know, it's not like how many strikeouts and then you put it up. You know, like we don't, we don't have that. Well, I think she's done a great job of trying not to think about it. And she literally just wants to win every single game. And so I know I've had people say, just give her the green light. I'm like, everybody has it. She's got it. She's, she's, she's ready to get it over with. She's, she's had it. In fact, it. I'd like her to step closer to the three-point line Please. a lot of times because those all go in. Uh, yeah, and I don't want to take away that they didn't guard her. I thought they did a nice job, and there were some things that we could probably have done a little bit better. If Honestly, I feel like if we could rebound the ball a little bit better, um, that gets us in our flow a little bit more, and things tend to open up for us more. Jenny, um, stylistically, um, you obviously want to play offensively very free-flowing, fast, you know, but it looks like OSU is capable of that. Is that just random happenstance that you and them in the same state, same conference, Kind of have that ability, or is that something that maybe is trending more in the women's game? I don't know. What are you? What's your sense of just? Looks like that. I mean, when you two play each other, it could be fun, high-scoring games from now on. Yeah, and I think we both would like to improve on our defense um, in some of those, um, and I think we both like to improve in some of our offense. I think, I think, you know, what's what's fun is that there's two. There are two different styles. Right, there's theirs is a lot more off the bounce. Ours is a little bit more off the pass, um, 
and you know they're going to run a few more sets. We're going to run a little bit more of a motion where we're making reads. Um, but I, I do think the game is trending that way. But I do think that you know what we both want to do, and I think Tulsa is the same. Oral Roberts is the same. You know we're trying to grow this game in our state, and so I think the the four you know of us really want girls to grow up and look at these women and we have a lot of different great teams that are fundamental and they're playing well together and they're it's very good high level basketball and so from that standpoint i think we should be really lucky in this state to realize that there's a lot of people that they can be watching um, that play great basketball that set each other up and um yeah i mean I, i'm proud of that i'm really proud of that and I think there's a lot of things that we as, as coaches from our schools can do as well. You know, there's, there's a, I'm gonna go off on a tangent right now, but this is my, this is kind of the soapbox I'm in. Lucky you that you're in here. Um, we, we need to be better at a grassroots level. And I've, you know, since I've been here, um, my kids are five, eight and 10, and we've witnessed four fights already in softball, baseball, basketball, between coaches and coaches, parents and parents, officials. You know, officials right now, there used to be over 2,000 officials. Now there's less than 800. There's not opportunities for kids if we continue to do this. And so we as coaches, I take great pride in being able to have people come. I don't want to berate an official. I don't, you know, they need to do their job. I need to do my job. You know, I'm coming at it from a mom. I'm coming at it from a coach where I want these guys to love playing. And tonight, you guys got to see a group of women on both sides love playing the game. And from that standpoint, that's why we need to fill this place. Because in our in our state, our sport is it's hurt. It's at the grassroots level. We're not doing our job, and we can do better. How tough was it to play though when 50 fouls are called in the game? What does that do to change? It doesn't help when I'm yelling at the officials, right? Is that where you're trying to go? No, don't get me in trouble, James. No, 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 no. No, and I. Yeah. It's a lot of times walking to the free throw line. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. It is, and it's and it's a little bit of a challenge too for us to because there's some games where there's 50. You know, we've had a few games where there've been quite a few fouls, and we have to learn to adjust. I thought we did a much better job today than we did the last time that that happened, and then there's games where there's hardly any fouls that that are called, and so. No matter what, we're the ones that have to adjust. Every official is trying to do their job, right? They're not coming out here to be against us or to be against them or, you know, they, it's not like they don't like Maddie or they don't like somebody else, right? They're trying to do their job. Whether or not we agree with it, that's our job, right? But, like, as from that standpoint, we have to adjust to be able to play. There were 50 fouls called, and we almost scored 200 points. I think we adjusted. We needed to be better but we adjusted. Um, I want to ask, um, I, I, there are some uh, top 25 women's programs that I think play a grinded out style, or maybe, uh, but uh, you know, score in the 60s, win in the 60s, have great programs winning in the 60s. You'd rather win in the 90s. And so I'd rather on. have 90, but not our opponent. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, somewhere along the line, you decided, you know, my teams will play like this, not like that. Why did you choose that whenever you chose that? And I don't know, just whatever you want to say to that. Well, and I'll pass it to Maddie, too. It's fun. It's fun. And I want them to make reads. I want them to learn the game. I don't want it to be about me. I don't want it to be a chess match. There's a time and place that we're going to call a set, right? There's a time and place that, you know, we've got to figure that out. But they're gonna always make better reads than I can coach. And when they can play intuitively, when they can play to their authentic selves and their game, I don't think there's anything better. And so for us to be able to get up and down and for them to be able to make reads, and sometimes it's head scratching and it's why are we doing this and why are we doing that? You know, especially some of the end of the quarters and the games and we'll figure that stuff out. Um, but it's fun and I want, and I, did anybody come here tonight saying, man, they were terrible. That was a terrible game, I'm never coming back. Not one person. Not one person. So you can. We, I, we got time, Josh. <laughs> you go ahead. Um. Yeah. I mean, like she said, it, it's fun, and I don't know why would why anybody wouldn't want to play um, that way, where everybody has the 
the green light and we're making reads and we're not having to keep looking at Jenny like, what are we running? What are we running? We don't have to slow the ball down. We don't, we know it. So um, we're able to play and to just keep playing. We don't have to stop. And I find the more they get to do that, the more they play to each other's strengths. They figure out their own strengths, then they figure out each other's. And to me, that's going to apply to life no matter what you do, because it's problem solving, it's decision making, it's being able to understand you're different than Taylor, than Anna, and not just, it's not just about you, it's not just about Taylor, it's not just about Anna, it's about everybody, but then she knows exactly what Taylor's strengths are and values them, and exactly what Anna's strengths are and values them. So to me, it, it carries over into life as well. Um, Jenny, just a question about uh, this rivalry. I mean, it's been, the last decade, it's been completely even. You guys played a really close game today. Um, you and JC are now kind of the new faces of women's basketball in the state of Oklahoma. I mean, just what, what do you think about this this rivalry, and do you expect it to just be continue to be so close when you guys are in charge? Um, well, one, I think that Maddie Williams and Taylor Robertson and Anna Yunusa are the face of this program, and will always want it to be that. Uh, and I feel really strongly about that. I understand your point. I just, I just want to make sure that that, that everybody knows that that's how I feel. I don't. It's not going to be about me and JC. It's never going to, it's never going to be that. There's a lot of respect probably between both of us. I know we respect them a lot. Uh, I think they're going to do a great job. And the better the basketball is in this state, the better it is for everybody. And again, I can go back on my soapbox. I won't. But. I think the better we all are, the better it's going to be. And this is exactly what you want. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.